Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? It's a lovely October morning. We've just had a heat wave and uh, it's starting to, temperatures are starting to turn down a bit now, which is incredible considering it's the uh, 23rd of October. And in a, you know, in a couple of weeks, in a week it'll be uh, Halloween, in a couple of weeks it'll be November 5th which normally it's freezing, but uh, I was sitting out on my shirt sleeves in the garden the other day. I was still mowing the lawn. So I'd just like to say to anyone who's trying to flog the global warming message in the UK, you're wasting your time, go somewhere else. Honestly, nobody in the UK is ever going to complain or get involved in global warming. So. How are you anyway? Yeah? Oh well, they're pretty much the same here really. Just uh, work, 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 you know. I had a letter through from uh, our plan providers, DPAS. DPAS was a offshoot of Demplan. When it became clear that Demplan was going to be massive, the uh, Stephen Noor and Marilyn Orchardton who set it up took on a few people I think including Quentin Skinner and a few others and then Quentin I think decided to go his own way you know set up his own firm doing the same thing and uh, the, there was a difference in that uh, Demplan is very particular to make sure that you use the Demplan branding and that you sell their you sell their brand and they're very protective of their brand so you have to you know they're fly British Airways you know you have to be of a certain standard to fly British Airways and uh, whereas D-Pass said uh, listen guys you know we can save you a bit of money if you don't ask us to do a ton of marketing of the D-Pass brand you do just market it under your own brand like the Oak Tree Dental Practice Plan or the Cedar Tree Dental Practice Plan call it what you like and we'll just do the back end which is a bit of a cash cow really because they just skim off uh, every every uh, direct debit that goes through and of course the majority of them go through without any trouble at all it's a lucrative business you know even if you're only skimming off pennies and of course they centralize by the by the insurance centrally and um, although they might not do now that all changed this year there's some funny thing going on with insurance Anyway, that wasn't what I was going to talk about. Yes, it was. The, the D-Pass, they've asked us to set our fees for April. They like to get it done early, you know, because they write to all the patients in uh, January, I think, and telling them if the fees are going to go up. So we've got this problem where uh, all our patients on D-Pass now are incredibly healthy. And what we do when we sell the D-Pass or when we offer it to a patient who needs has told us that they need something similar um, what we do is we say well you get three checkups a year and um, uh, you can see the hygienist three times a year and uh, all the, most of your treatments free you know with very few exceptions your, your treatment is free uh, fillings are free root treatments are free extractions are free etc etc um, and some people join because they like the idea of seeing the hygienist three times a year. Now that is not, we don't encourage them to join. There, there are other plans for that. Uh, Sainsbury's is our local uh, practice. They do a dental plan which is £100 a year, £99 a year. So less than a third of the cost of our plan. And for that you get, uh, I think, I think it might be two checkups a year, two scan and polishes, and a 10% discount on your treatment. Now, the 10% discount on your treatment is no bloody use because they put the treatment up 10% to compensate for the fact that they're going to have to give it to you for 10% off. So, so you can forget that for a start. But for £100, basically, you're getting two checkups, two scan and polishes. Now, now I suppose for you know for £100 as a dentist for two checkups, two scan and polishes. It's not a massive deal, especially when it's not being paid at the point of delivery. Because if you had to, 
uh, it's a fact of life on these plans that if you're charging somebody 58 pounds for a checkup, which which we do, then um, you're you know you, you cannot do a two minute checkup. You cannot just say hello, hi, you, how's the kids? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, five, six, seven, one. Everything's fine. Yeah, fine. Cheerio. Uh, come through to the desk, and I'll take 58 quid off you. That's that's what gets the the patients going home saying, I can't believe it. I've just paid 58 pounds for a checkup, and it couldn't have taken him more than five minutes. So you have to do some value-added stuff, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying you have to do some value-added stuff which is just bolted on for the sake of it. I mean, you have to think of new and innovative tests and inspections and checks to bring. So for example, like, you know, you could do a blood pressure check, or you could do, a, I don't know, look at their plaque under a microscope, or you could do what I do, which is just always uh, stain the teeth up with disclosing solution and, and give away a free uh, bag containing a toothbrush and toothpaste and a mouth mirror and uh, some instructions and a business card, right? So, <clears throat> but the whole, but there's always this thing that, you know, if it's a paid for checkup, you've got to justify your 58 quid. Whereas if it's uh, on a plan, quite often the patient, when they've been in a couple of times, they'll be on their way to work they will just be popping in as a favour to you and they know that you're not going to find anything and therefore they would rather appreciate it if you wouldn't hang about and try and puff it all out and bulk it all out and just say hi how are you routine checkup is it yeah yeah everything's looking really really great see you in four months time because it's it's every four months and every four months it comes around very often you know you might think well that's a long way away but in fact it's a vagary of the human memory that you can't really remember what you were doing six months ago but you can usually remember being in the same place four months ago it's almost like it was yesterday you know so that's why we choose four months because first of all the patient feels as though they're at the dentist a lot to justify what they're paying and secondly um, if you tell them something that you want to build on if you want to build on the knowledge that you've given them they will still have that knowledge when you come when they come back in four months so if you say look I want you to use this brush or I want you to brush a certain way uh, then <clears throat> when they come in after four months you'll you can say to them like how are you getting on with brushing that certain way or did you are you using the brush I told and they'll remember they'll remember it if you have six months that's all gone six months there's no use saying I oh, do, do you remember what we said about your brushing last time no you know so so the the, the the oral health of someone who comes in every six months now bearing in mind the six months is, is is about the most you can ever get an NHS patient in to get an NHS patient in every six months is a miracle nine months a year two years five years is more like uh, the NHS but at six months, the, the oral health of the patient goes goes up and down like that, yeah? Whereas <clears throat> with um, someone who comes in every four months, their, their oral health will, will sort of go up like that. Because they're, every time they're, they're sort of building on what they remember from last time, and it sort of sticks. So... We are going to put our fees up, but we've got the problem because we've been so we've been so successful at what we do that almost none of the patients now need to see the hygienist. And in in explaining that, I have to explain what my definition of seeing the hygienist is, right? Because it's like. Uh, our, it's our attitude that it is fairly and squarely the patient's own responsibility to brush their own teeth. Now, and that's a bit like saying to a patient, uh, it's fairly and squarely your responsibility to cut your own hair. Okay, that's that's how that comes across to the patient. They're like, so it's if I say to them, they say to me, well, can I see the hygienist? And I say, well, you don't need to see the hygienist. And they're like, well, I don't. 
It doesn't seem to be relevant whether you think I need it. I want it, I'm telling you, I want it. And this difference between wants and needs, you know? The reason why a conflict arises between wants and needs on third party capitation is because the dentist acts as the underwriter. So the dentist underwriting the risk. There is no third party underwriter on DPAS or DEMPLAN. So if um, you know the patients on um, uh, the patients on, on an insurance, say they go to Tesco's and Tesco's offer dental insurance, and then they come to you and and they say, you know, I've got a dental insurance through Tesco's, covers me up to 300 quid. You know, what do I need doing? And you can have a look, and then there's a coincidence of needs there and wants, isn't there? You patient wants to have some work done to justify the expense of the insurance policy. They want to have a healthy mouth, and you want to uh, do some work to earn some money to pay the bills. So you're you're on the same. Thing. Funnily enough, it's that coincidence of wants that brings the schemes down, because the uh, third-party insurance schemes always end up as a collusion between the insured party and the treatment provider to provide as much treatment as possible. And we get this all the time, you know, you get patients who come in and say, well, you need two crowns. Well, can I have one? And then after the 1st of January, can I have the other one? Why? It's easier to do them together. Well, because I'm maxed out on my claim, what I can claim this year with one crown, but the new year starts on the 1st of January, so and then I can put the other crown on, on next year. And so you get this inflationary spiral where the fees have to increase, the, the uh, third party underwriter increases the premium to um, cover the health, uh, the sort of the um, collaboration between the provider and the patient and uh, has to put the premiums up and then people who aren't playing the system tend to leave because they're not getting good value for money and so the premiums have to go up even more so the spiral accelerates and the whole thing collapses. So that was the genius idea that Stephen Nor and Marilyn Orchard had which was to not to have a third party underwriter but to, uh, but to make the dentist the underwriter and say look you're a dentist you're the person who wants the patient to have you say that you want to get your patients healthy and have them healthy mouth so um, you underwrite them why don't you underwrite the risk that anything might go wrong and then if nothing does go wrong you benefit you get the underwriters premium whereas if you're a lousy dentist or you don't play the game by the rules then as the underwriter you lose out you, know, you make a loss so the hygienist in my opinion is not there to um, is not there to take the place of the patient in cleaning the teeth. And as such, you cannot opt in. You cannot just request to see a hygienist. You can on a pay-as-you-go basis. As far as I'm concerned, someone wants to see the hygienist on a pay-as-you-go basis, you can come in every day. But once you're on a dental plan, where, of which I am the underwriter, there has to be a reason for you to see the hygienist. And the reason cannot be I just can't be asked to brush my teeth properly. <clears throat> I'd prefer it if I just came and saw the hygienist once every two or three months so that she can do it all for me. And this has come as a bit of a shock to, to patients, you know? Some patients, anyway. Uh, because I've had to explain to some patients that, well, uh, you know, am I entitled to three hygienists? visits a year and that's a difficult question to answer the answer is yes and no the answer is yes if you need them no and no if you don't but when I joined you said I could have three hygienists you know visits a year yes I said that because for the same reason the answer is yes you can have them if you need them but no you can't have anything that you don't need we don't provide on DPAS anything that the patient doesn't need nothing and, you know, but I'd like to see the hygienist. Well, the hygienist's role really is to remove any scale or stain that's on your teeth that you can't remove yourself. 
and that's only because that's there temporarily it's only there temporarily because there's been some sort of failure in your brushing so then what we do is we go back to plaque control brushing etc etc to the point where you don't get scale and stain on your teeth and and then at that point you stop seeing the hygienist again so you know I mean you may say well the problem is it sounds a bit harsh but the problem is that with the fee setting we've now got this um, conundrum which is that we've got a load of patients coming in to see the hygienist who arguably don't really need to see the hygienist and God knows what she does on them but she does something on them for 20 minutes half an hour and and everyone's happy except me because I'm paying her 25 quid which is the only real expense on the on these schemes you know if you're running a practice if you're the dentist okay there's your time involved and there's the running cost of the surgery materials etc like that but hygienist is you it's probably the only other clinical practitioner which you're going to need you're going to bring in you're to you know to subcontract the uh, some of the work too in the same way as if you brought in an endodontist you'd have to pay the endodontist to do the endodontics on the den plan patient but wouldn't well, I suppose technically you would be able to charge them because it's a specialist job. But hygiene's not seen as a specialist job, it's just seen as a part and parcel of, uh, of dentistry. So, if we were able to um, cut down on the number of patients who went to see the hygienist, we could keep our fee increase lower than it would be otherwise. If we continue to pander to these bunch, increasingly large bunch of people, who don't need to see the hygienist but like to then the fees are going to be higher and uh, and patients who either don't need to see the hygienist or uh, you know don't just for one reason or another don't come see the hygienist as much as every, once every uh, four months these people are going to be um, at a disadvantage aren't they financially they're going to be subsidizing the, the people who treat the hygiene is like a hairdresser so I mean I explained this problem to a patient yesterday who was on Demplan uh, D-Pass and uh, you know and he said it's a, it's a tricky one you know because you know there's a, there's a chance that you're going to um, you're going to upset people either way and uh, we have had patients leave because they they thought that they were absolutely cast in iron going to see the hygienist three times a year. When they find out that it's at my discretion, um, you know, based on whether they need it or not, uh, they've left the scheme. And uh, fair enough, you know. Um, the, the problem there is not that they left, or that they the reasons why they left, but the reasons why they joined. You know, why were they? Why, why did they not pick up or why was it not explained to them at the beginning that no, no treatment which is deemed to be not necessary would be included or perhaps they thought that it, is, it was necessary and I'd refused it, you know. Anyway, so I think I might have to do a poll of the patients and see uh, what they say because then at least if I do get some pushback I'll be able to say well, um, you know, that, that view was in the minority. Um, my inclination is to um, is to cut back on the hygienist visits uh, because I do see a load of people coming in who really don't need you know these these are people who these are people who wouldn't qualify for scale and polish in an NHS practice even before they were if, you know. But they would, they would let, me, let me put it another way, they, they would, I'll put any one of my pre-scale and polish patients up against an NHS post-scale and polish patient and, uh, and you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. So uh, anyway that's what's on my mind, fee scales and uh, what to do about patients who believe that they're paying into a, an all-you-can-eat buffet, treatment buffet. But that was a problem as well, wasn't it? I mean, these buffets, people 
they had all your eat buffets and people would fill their plates up and waste a load of food and then eventually they said uh, you know you'd get charged if you left any food behind you had to only eat what you you uh, any, anything you didn't eat anything you took off the buffet and didn't eat was chargeable so well everyone has the same problem right I'll um, talk to you tomorrow bye